Starting here with this question, feel free to interrupt. Uh, so what are we going to do? And the whole idea of it being about engagement. Were we at the same meeting? I think. <laughs> um, and this is where this was the, the bit that we really started with. Um, and what we have been trying to do is to capture some of the phrases that have stood out for us. And really, it's your job to remind us of other phrases or issues or ideas that we didn't capture or didn't consider to be important and therefore we didn't give them prominence. So if you feel that there's something missing or you feel even now inspired to say something as a result of that, that's what this session is about. Um, I quite like this image of the tower um, and the higher the building, the lower the engagement, the higher the hierarchy. And our coding is basically red for the sort of um, obstacles and problems and issues of that kind. And this color um, and the orange are for your dreams or your sort of radical ideas in response. Now, we may have got that wrong sometimes, but that's basically the thing. So here it's saying we sharing is in our genes. We're born with a sense of fairness. It's all about ultimate flow. And let's have 20 seconds of silence. And those, those were some of the original things, but and then saying bonus is disengaged, lack of recognition, blissful incompetence, we have met the enemy, it is us, innocent is now owned by Coca-Cola, values versus costs. These are some of the things that people were saying um, are, are dispiriting. So customer service training is often dispiriting and formulaic stuff. Fear to stick their heads over parapets. Companies fear, fear comes out a lot, it has its own portrait down there. Do you like that? <laughs> no. Uh, fear of challenging those above you. And this question here, what is stopping this from happening? Because somebody did come up to us and say, you know, we know this. Um, if I say something that you all know, then if you go, hmm, like that, then it helps me uh, figure out that I'm not speaking rubbish. <laughs> we know this, don't we? Mm. <laughs> We've known it for a long time, haven't we? <laughs> And yet, it still doesn't seem to be happening, does it? <laughs> and so the question is, what is stopping it from happening? It's a very interesting question, I think. I turned it back to the, uh, the person who posed that one. And his response was the confusing complexity of the systems. But we're actually quite good at dealing with systems, so it's maybe not the whole answer then. Um, some of the green things uh, that came out, management by wandering around, very old idea, but it's probably still actually at the heart of this. And that's why we took this management by wandering around and started making pathways around the whole board. And that was interesting because it seemed to link things which we didn't realize were linked before. So um, stop automating everything was had to end up on the pathway. Make time for creativity. Interesting how those sort of things come together. Um, Again, this is another fear one. Uh, and, and linked to that is better conversations. Sharing passion, sharing purpose, sharing vision, sharing principles, sharing values, sharing decisions. And of course, the important word, although it's small there, is sharing. And all the other words are very familiar words. And so is sharing, actually. So what's stopping this from happening? That still remains... An intriguing question, worthy of intense curiosity, I think. <laughs> I quite like this break rules. Um, I just, I, don't, I always like that, so I always write it big if it comes up. Uh, trust and honesty, emotional intelligence sort of fading out there. Someone came up and said, I hate that term. How many hate it? Three, four. How many love it? Okay. How many couldn't really give a damn? <laughs> um, I, I think it's sort of one of those fun words. It used to be really popular, didn't it? Uh, linking intelligence and emotion. Uh, I think this is the IQ, isn't there? And then the EQ and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think there's a lot on here which you would say pretty familiar stuff. The question is, did you in your groups get to a point where you felt there was a little bit of a breakthrough, a little glimmer or an inkling of something different. This 
is the Aikido bit, which I thought was, was quite interesting, wasn't it? That um, sense of engaging in energy and embracing it. And, uh, Aikido actually means the way of harmony or the way of love. It's a kind of martial art, but it, it's actually a, the art of love. I don't know who said it, but my heart has to feel and the fact that um, he talks about start with small changes and prove that we all need to stop turning if we do things differently. And for me, one of the things that's always puzzled me about particularly bigger, well-established organisations is why they're always looking for the next big thing and the next small things probably just sitting right underneath their nose and apparently achievable and doable and just as satisfying. Oh, I wish I thought of it, but I haven't. <laughs> so I think my, my question always is that uh, if if we were to shift a, a, a belief or a perception that would possibly transform everything and you know as we do these visual minutes we're always looking for that that phrase that everyone wakes up to a new way of seeing reality and then go off and, and the world changes overnight as a result have we done that today have you done that <laughs> you asked what, what we're waiting for. What you're waiting for? You just asked any questions during your piece. Yes. Um, I think we're waiting for permission. Stand up and tell them. I think we're waiting for permission to do it. <laughs> permission? Yeah. From? That's the better question. Probably from ourselves. <laughs> it could be, couldn't it? <laughs> There is, I think there are some things in here saying, I can't find them right now, where it says, take, take the permission into your hand, take I, the risk. I think we're waiting for somebody who doesn't engage their staff or the customers, somebody big to fail, <laughs> with links to okay. the lack of engagement. I think that's what it needs. And then we can go, we told you so. so. <laughs> yeah, it won't be, people, you know, the, the Googles, the Amazons, all these great companies have been around for years, and that hasn't inspired people to change. I think, unfortunately, it will be okay. a negative, it'll be... Oh shit, so and so have gone bunk because they didn't engage their staff yeah. or the customers. So shit, we better engage our staff. <coughs> that must have been doing a good job. It's <laughs> a <laughs> <laughs> great Google and absolute joy engaging with the staff. You would go to presentations, for your staff, you would have bad, you would go on stage, you would not talk to anybody. But they, but they didn't fail because they lost customers. No, they, they, they failed because they were too ambitious and made them. They failed because he wasn't but I, but I think the change is, is, is customers deserting a company because of really poor service yeah. linked to engagement. I think that needs to happen. So let's, Hang on. let's sabotage someone. Yeah. <laughs> I think what was interesting was a lot of the discussion was about how do you make intangibles. A lot of things are about intangible things. How do I actually show that that is successful? And I think that is not... I think we've touched upon it sometimes, but it's difficult to they not only get the permission, but how do you convince anybody to say, well, this is really what we have to invest our time. Like I'm going to spend two days just talking about this thing and I say, okay, so what, what did it drive? What did it get out? That's, I think, the, the fear that you have when you go down that.